Okay, I think we're ready to start. So first off, I just wanted to point out, I love the celebratory mood that people are in because that's really why we're here is a celebration. Um, so just first off, I wanna start by saying good afternoon and thank you for coming out. I also wanna mention that we've got people joining us on a live stream that are joining us remotely. So I'd like to welcome them as well. You know, as we process the news of Michael's passing back in the spring, we thought about how are we going to make sure that we appropriately recognized and celebrated his life, as well as the legacy that he leaves here at the University of Oklahoma. And I was just mentioning to his son, Charlie, it went from an idea just a few months ago to actually culminating in having over 100 people here in this tent in Dodson Courtyard showing up. So I'm thrilled that everybody has turned out today because I think it's a fantastic reflection on Michael and what he's done for the University of Washington. Excuse me, Oklahoma. <laughs> See, I knew that slip, and, and, and I'll make this, I'll point this out. So I, hopefully that's my Freudian slip, because I did this uh, a few months ago with Joe Harris, and President Harris never lets me live down things. And I said the University of Arizona. I wasn't quite astute enough to pick it up then, but now I picked it up. So you can tell that I've spent time at different places, but yes, thank you, the University of Oklahoma. So my apologies. Um, this is the point where I need to introduce people um, that are here. And what I'd like to do is really recognize, first and foremost, the Price family. So the Price family has come out in force today to help us celebrate Michael's life and legacy. We have 10 members of the Price family with us, including his wife, Jenny, his three of his sons, Charlie, at, on the young end. We've got uh, Jonathan or JP. We've got Andrew here with us. Um, we've got his sister Claudia here, we've got a niece here, we've got grandkids here that almost got lost at Boyd House, but I think we, we found them during our lunch at Boyd House. So I, I want to say thank you for, for turning out. I also want to say thank you to the family for helping us plan this event. We could have never pulled this event off without the involvement of the Price family. So again, I want to say thank you for, for being here and for helping us plan this event. Next, what I'd like to do is introduce you to or, or recognize some of the folks that are with us on the University of Oklahoma side, starting with our regents. So joining us today from our Board of Regents are Rick Brott, one of our newest members of the Board of Regents. We have Anita Holloway here. Eric Stevenson is here. I saw Rick Nagel come in just uh, towards the end here. Rick's here, as well as our Executive Secretary for the Regents, Tim Rhodes. Uh, and I can't overstate my gratitude for the Regents. They have a very difficult job. It's a very complex organization. They have to govern somebody who's almost ungovernable. That's President Harris. Um, so I want to thank them for the, the tremendous effort they put forward for both the university as well as for Price College. I'd also like to recognize some of the OU leadership that's here with us today, starting with our 15th president of the University of Oklahoma, uh, Joseph Harris Jr., as well as our vice president of Inter intercollegiate athletics, Joe Castiglione, or as he's known here, Joe C. Uh, we've also got other members of OU leadership. We have our provost of the Norman campus and senior vice president, Andre Denis Wright. Um, I should get some points for correct, correctly pronouncing that in French, um, having lived in Montreal and France for a little while. Uh, I know we also have some others that are joining us from the leadership. I believe Jeff Blonick, our VP of Enrollment Services, is here. Sean Burridge, our VP of Executive Affairs, and, and President Harris' Chief of Staff is here. Mary Margaret Holt from the Weizenhofer Family of Fine Arts. Dorothy Anderson, our Chief Human Resource Officer, and Melissa Caperton, our Director of Communications. In addition, on the OU Foundation side, we have joining us today our President of the OU Foundation, uh, Guy Patton, um, as well as the Chief Operating Officer of the Foundation and the Chair of the Board of Advisors here at Price College, Bonnie Kennedy. And then last but not least on the Foundation side, we have our VP uh, and Head of Advancement, Amy Noah, is also here joining us as well. The last person, I saved this last person for last, uh, just because of the notoriety, is our legendary 
former head football coach, Mr. Bob Stoops. You know, most of you know that Michael was an enormous Sooner football fan. It's what brought him here to the University of Oklahoma. He was an enormous supporter of the football programs, but OU athletics in general, whether it was scholarships or the Price Family Wellness Center that was created as a, as a result of a gift from Michael. Um, the one thing that I do want to say before I move on is, is what impresses me about the University of Oklahoma is that the leadership shows up for each other. That's not true of other universities. And it's one of the things that is a great joy of my job is the collaboration and collegiality of my colleagues here at OU. So again, I want to say thank you for them for showing up today. Now what I'd like to do is turn the floor over to a very longtime friend of Michael Price, his college roommate here at OU back in the early 70s, and a lifelong friend since then, Mr. Jim Barnes, is going to share some, some reflections and st some stories about his time with Michael here at OU and beyond. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Jim Barnes. Thank you, Dean Phelps. I really appreciate that introduction, and uh, I feel kind of like a minister because I want you to turn your hymnals uh, <laughs> to this second page here where you see Michael in that uh, in the T-shirt that says Hunt. Well, that was taken in my garage apartment of Dr. Dan Donnell and I back in probably 1971. That is Michael Price, believe you me. So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Kristen Lazlier from the foundation called me and said, would you like to say a few words about Michael in his years as a student? And uh, I said, sure, how much time do I have? And she said, oh, you got five to eight minutes. And I'm like, okay, I'll try to give you the con condensed version, but you know, I could talk for hours about Michael Price stories. There's so many and they're all so good, but I'll do my best, because uh, I met Michael in 1971. Uh, it was our junior year. We had business classes together. Um, we hit it off and became really good friends. Um, and because it was kind of an unusual relationship, though, because I was a small town boy from southeastern Oklahoma, and here's this guy from Long Island, New York, you know, coming in, but we. We meshed and everything was great. And over time, I integrated him into my circle of Oklahoma friends. A lot of them are here today. And Dr. Dan Donnell, he's one of them. Baird Archibald, Joe Warren, Bill Huffman, who's not here today. And uh, we had a great time together as a close knit friendship. So we immediately adopted him and shared all the college experiences together some I've been sworn to secrecy about, and, but you know how that is, you know, when you're in college. But uh, he was a great friend, and he was always, he was always up for anything, you know. Uh, and I knew because of that that there was just something special about him, but I, I couldn't put my finger on it, you know, uh, at that time. But, uh, but over time, you know, I was able to determine that it was a unique, a unique combination of characteristics that made him special. Academically, Michael really enjoyed the courses offered by the business school, especially the investment courses where he could have dialogue with the professors. Uh, he really liked that, and the business school was really good about providing that for him and me. Socially, he just liked to get together with friends. He liked to listen to music, uh, all kinds of music, even Frank Zappa. I mean, <laughs> I never could get on the Frank Zappa thing with him, but he liked it, so I listened along with him. Uh, he liked talking with friends. He liked cooking out. He liked watching TV, just hanging out and having fun with his friends. But he really had a passion for sports, especially Sooner football. But he liked everything. He liked everything sports. He liked snow skiing, water skiing. He was a huge Yankee fan. Uh, was a good tennis player. Played lacrosse. He liked to hunt fish. 
I mean, he even did a float trip with us, you know. He was just always up for anything. Hey, let's go do this. Let's go do that. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. You know, he was that type of guy. And uh, he was a... He was a tough competitor, and he was, a, he was just a tough guy in general, both, both, men, both mentally and physically. Uh, as an example, we invited him to play on our intramural flag football team, and uh, I don't think he ever really got that concept. To him, <laughs> it, to him it was about, like, hit you first, then pull the flag, okay? You know. So you add all this up and you get a guy that had a passion for life, a passion for business, and he had a passion for family. The biggest smiles I ever got from him was when he talked about his family. He loved his family. This passion for life, hard work, on Wall Street, he was a hard worker. And family, that was Michael Price. And I just hope I've given you a perspective of who Michael was and what a great and generous person he was. And I'm so proud of what Michael and his family have done for this school that he loves so much. And I'm proud to call him my friend. Thanks, Jim. Heartfelt sentiments. I'm going to echo some of the same characteristics that I think you just spoke about. Before I do, I want to recognize one person I'm looking right at him. That's my predecessor, my friend Daniel Poland, who drove up from Fort Worth today only to drive right back down because he's got a board <laughs> of advisors meeting that, that uh, Tamara, his wife, is sort of subbing in for him, he told me. So thank you, Daniel, for showing up today. Um, in a way, it's a bit unusual, maybe even uncomfortable for the person that probably knew Michael the shortest period of time amongst the people that are speaking to talk about him. But I think I do have some insight into him in the two years or so that I got to know Michael. And what I'd like to do is start with how I was first introduced to Michael. So it's uh, mid-December of 2019. I'm living in Montreal. I'm on a Zoom call, dressed in a suit, wearing pants. This is back when you wore pants on a Zoom call. And I'm looking at a picture of the provost's conference room, um, surrounded by a bunch of people that are on the search committee for the dean. Kristen Lazalier was one of them. And Michael had joined. Michael was a member of the search committee. He had joined, but he had joined by Zoom, so his video was off. So all I heard was Michael's sort of disembodied voice asking me, to be quite honest with you, probably the most challenging questions that the search committee asked me. So that was my initial introduction to Michael, was this disembodied voice that asked me these challenging questions. But over the next two years, I think I really got better, a better focus on who Michael Price was. So a few weeks after the Zoom interview happened, I had the opportunity to fly to New York City and spend a half a day with Michael of, of MFP investors. And two things struck me there. Michael's ability to multitask and flip back and forth between focusing on characteristics of a complex financial deal, but also keep me engaged in a conversation. So I had, a, I think, a good appreciation of his financial intellect, but also the warmth and collegiality that he and his team had for one another. So again, I got some insight into him in that way as well. A few weeks after that happened, I was offered the job. Now, I know from talking to the former provost, Kyle Harper, who hired me, Michael was instrumental in me being offered the job of Dean of the Price College of Business. But the thing that I don't think most people know, and I told Michael this early on, is that one of the reasons I chose to come here and accept the job was because of Michael. It's not common for a major benefactor of any college to be as deeply involved in the search process and with the evaluation of a Dean candidate as Michael was. And what that did was it spoke volumes to me about who he would be once I stepped into the role. And sure enough, that's exactly what he turned out to be. So he would call me almost every month like clockwork. And when he called, it was always the same two questions. How's your family adjusting? And what can I do to help? 
first question was always about family because his point was, if your family is not adjusting well, if you're not a unified unit, a team as a family, everything else doesn't matter. So it was always the first question. The second question was, how can I help? For me, that was Michael to a T. Deeply family-oriented, as Jim just pointed out, as well as deeply willing to help. During one of our phone calls in, I think this would have been in the fall of 2021, Michael and I discussed some of the biggest challenges that we were facing at Price College. Now, towards the end of the call, he said, Corey, do me a favor, write these down in a really short email for me, because I, I, I want to reflect on these things. Now, I said, fine. I sent him the email. I didn't know why he wanted this email list. Well, fast forward a couple weeks, I'm at a meeting in President Hare's office. With me is our provost, uh, Andre, as well as Amy Noah. And before the meeting starts, we're chit-chatting, and Joe comes up to me and says, I just got off the phone with Michael Price. And Michael mentioned to me five things that he wants me to do for Price College. <laughs> and then I realized why Michael had me write that email. That, to me, was also Michael Price. He was a champion for causes he believed in, and he believed deeply in the Price College of Business. In June of that year, 2021, three of us, Kristen Lazalier, Jared McDuffie, and I flew to New York City to meet with Michael to give him a draft of our strategic plan and get his feedback on the plan. During the, the long conversation that we had, it was sort of a, a very rambling conversation, we started talking about the state of Oklahoma. And one of the things that Michael pointed out to me about the state of Oklahoma is it's not a big state in terms of population. It's not a particularly wealthy state. But it's a state populated by hardworking, really humble, really capable people. And it was the first time that I really started to get an insight into Michael's affection, deep affection for the state of Oklahoma. And as I thought about it and his contributions to OU over the years, what I really think it was for Michael was, yes, it was about contributing to his alma mater, but it was really about investing in the state of Oklahoma. Because he said to me, the state needs people like me and others like me to invest. Because if it does, it will become a bigger, more prosperous state. So again, that was Michael to me, willing to invest in people when he thought it was needed and when he thought the return was there. You know, by his own admission, Michael was a consummate value investor. That is the basis for MFP investors. A consummate deal maker. But he once told me that the best investments he ever made in his lifetime, in terms of the return that they generated, were the investments that he made in the University of Oklahoma. Because the payoff in terms of the people, in terms of the student experience, in terms of the faculty experience, in terms of what people learned, was greater than he had realized in his financial givings. In the relatively brief amount of time that I knew Michael Price, I understood him to be a man of great integrity, to be extremely incisive, to be deeply family focused, to be willing to help and champion causes that he cared deeply about, and to be really empathetic for other people. I know my life has been made richer by knowing Michael, but I think the most important point is that his generosity, his commitment to this university has made hundreds of students, their lives better off. And his generosity will continue to make the lives of hundreds and thousands of more Sooners in the future to be better off. So I'm extremely thankful that I was able to know him for a short period of time. Now, part of this event is about legacy. And I know that when somebody of Michael's character, of Michael's commitment has passed, there's a concern about how will that legacy live on? Well, I'm here to tell you that I am extremely confident that legacy is going to live on in his family. And I'll give you two brief anecdotes about that. So JP and I were recently at a dinner together in Dallas that, that he organized to help us raise money for a new real estate initiative that we're working on here in Price College. And he helped uh, get about a dozen other people involved in real estate around this room. So there's 12 people, we're having this very lively dinner, we're having a great conversation, and almost spontaneously, I don't really know how it came about, one by one, these individuals started, started toasting Michael, acknowledging his recent passing out of respect to, to uh, John, but also acknowledging the transform, transformative impact that he had on the University of Oklahoma 
everybody offered their support for Jonathan at that dinner and the fundraising effort. And this is what Jonathan said, and I wrote it in my notes app on my phone after the dinner was over, and I quote, I'm just trying to carry on dad's legacy and make him proud. So that's anecdote number one, that I know that his legacy is going to live on in his family. Anecdote number two was more recent. So I know that Eddie Edwards is here. Eddie recently traveled to New York City with our Price Scholars program. You're gonna learn a little bit more about Price Scholars here in a minute. And he met with, with Andrew and with Jenny. And one of the things that they both agreed to do is continue the legacy of Michael meeting with the Price Scholars when they came to New York. So keeping that tradition alive. So both of those anecdotes make me confident that the legacy of Michael Price is gonna live on in his family. Speaking for myself in the College of Business, we are immensely grateful to bear the name of Michael F. Price. So with that, I wanna say thank you for your time and attention. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn the floor over to my friend, my boss, the 15th president of the University of Oklahoma, Mr. Joseph Harris, Jr. I want to welcome you all to the University of Washington. It's a real, real pleasure to have you here. I got some purple. Come on, it was too easy. Um, all right, so it was, uh, you know, each of us, I, I don't have Jim's uh, trajectory and perspective of, of all of those years, but I did first come to know of but not know Michael Price in November of 94. Uh, I started here uh, working here, and one of the first questions is, okay, who are the power brokers around here? How does this place work? And one of the answers is you have to know who Michael Price is. And within a couple of years, he had already given his first gifts, but then in 96, whenever he sold the business uh, and went into his five-year run with the new enterprise, uh, he made that historic gift. Uh, he made the historic $18 million gift. I was able to be in the room during that announcement in Adams Hall um, in what is now the Price College of Business. And it was one of those moments when I was in my, my mid to late 20s and you think, wow, I mean, this is a giant. And I thought he was old at the time, but it turns out I'm like 10 years older than he was when he <laughs> gave that gift, which is really concerning. But he was there and he gave this historic gift and it was a huge moment uh, in the life of the university because the year that he gave that in, in, t in 1997, it was the largest gift given to a public university in the country. And it was the largest gift ever given uh, to anything in higher ed in Oklahoma. And it was his landmark gift and, and he certainly did not have the typical Oklahoma accent, <laughs> right? Long Island was there. And, and to hear the story and to sit there and marvel, and, and the headline for me that day was, this is a, a, a remarkable gift. It's, it's, it's a stunning gift, and we, we use the word too loosely sometimes, but it was a transformational gift. And so you want to know, especially at that age, what, what's behind this person? Right? What brought them to this point where they can make a gift like this at the very young age of 45, the increasingly young age of 45? <laughs> And, and it was great to hear his story, right, about growing up on Long Island and, and how he got into the family business and this idea that he was out buying garments when he was a kid for his dad, right? And he was in the garment district negotiating and learning how you negotiate. And it was fascinating to hear how that in junior high, he bought his first stock. I thought it'd be some glamour stock, but it was a company called Bandog, which was like a tire retreading enterprise which what junior high kid isn't thinking about that opportunity, <laughs> right? And so he goes into a tire retrain, and, and it triples in value, right? The, the price of that stock triples in value. And, um, and, and then he had an opportunity to work with a, a friend of his dad's uh, who was in risk arbitrage. And he saw that, uh, you know, a great quote by him that, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but if folks could make money with their butts in seats just reading stuff, why wouldn't he try that? Um, and, and to see that happening is fascinating. And then he loved football and wanted, you know, played football in high school. You can see how competitive he was, um, but you know, some of us aren't built with great size. And, uh, and that ultimately led him to the University of Oklahoma. And, and to hear that story to me, and, and you heard how he was this epic value investor. 
He was ranked among the 25 most influential people in the world um, in, in 96. Right? And everyone had his name on their, on, on, on their, on their dashboard. Everyone was, was talking about Michael Price. And I thought, you know what? That's the high water mark. Right? If I could ever do something like that, that would make my life meaningful. And so the career progressed at OU, and I had a chance to get to know Michael uh, more as a person. Still iconic, um, but more as a person. And throughout the years, the last 28 years, I had the opportunity um, to be with him. Uh, I, had a, I was dean of the College of Law, and we had an event at Bill Comfort's house in New York. And he shows up for dinner um, at the law school. Uh, and we have a great evening, and we get to know each other even more. And at every major turn in the life of the university over the last 28 years, one of the things you do before any serious move is made, and it's not just in the college of business, you call Michael Price, and you make sure you know where he is on this. And that was true for every element of my career um, at OU. And to me, it's, it's, it's fascinating what you learn as you get older. But the last conversation that I had with Michael Price was on March 13th. He passed away on March 14th. And I called him that evening because he had been in the hospital just to check on him. And, of course, I had no idea he'd pass the next day. And I had no idea it had been this 11-year battle and how strong he was. But even on that call, the evening before he passed away, the conversation was all about everything but him, right? It was how the kids were doing, right? Checking in on Charlie, right? How that time was going this semester back home and how he was doing, right? Talked about the kids, talked about the university and where it was going. And it was a relatively brief conversation because he'd been out of the hospital for just a few days. And the next morning, we find out that he's, he's passed. And, and I look back and, 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 and think about that day in 97, when I, I sat in Adams Hall and, and looked at Michael Price, and I thought, you know what? If I could be that, that would be a meaningful life. If I could be so successful, I could give $18 million, that would be a successful life. You know, as you get older, you sort of learn. And looking back on it now, I realize that isn't the part of Michael Price that I hope that me and our kids and those that I love attain, right? It's everything that he did that was so clear after that gift, right? After he sold the company. He was just 45, right? I mean... There were plenty of more deals to be done in the financial world, and there were. But when you look at the impact he's had since then, that's what I want to be, right? That's what we want for our students that are here, is to li live a life of meaning and impact and real relationships and loving your family. Right? Where the first topic before you get to business is what really matters, which is the family. Right? When it's about your heart and your connection to something that really is bigger than yourself. Right, so the headline isn't Michael Price um, gave an $18 million gift. That isn't the headline. Right? The headline is Michael Price loves his family, that Michael Price loved this institution for what it stands. And he saw it. Right? He was an epic value investor. That means you, you find opportunities that nobody else fully recognizes at that moment. And he saw that in Oklahoma. He saw that in the University of Oklahoma, and he saw it in our students. And so it starts off, right, in the mid-90s with putting together a $100,000 gift for our students to learn how to invest, right, a $100,000 fund. And our students that wanted to invest in it had to run that money and then explain their performance and their thinking afterwards to him. Now think of the impact he has had in the life of those students. Right? It's this idea of connecting in a way that leaves a legacy that is not just, and it's important, but it's not just a name on a building. It's just not a gift that was given, right? It's what he's done that lives inside of each of us. So our oldest is a freshman this year. He couldn't be here because he's right in there in a class and could not get clearance to make it, right? I know all about academic freedom. I wasn't touching it. But my son's in here as a freshman. Our son's in here as a freshman 
finance major, right? And the price, College of Business. And every time I hear the price name, every time I hear it, it means more to me. And it means something that truly is special. It's about how we want our lives to be lived. It's about making a difference in the lives of your family, impacting the lives of other families. And not just leaving a legacy behind, but leaving a legacy inside of each of us, inside of each member of the family, including the grandkids, right? inside of our son that's in there right now in the Michael F. Price College of Business. Right? That is the impact that has been made. And that's the reason we continued to insist that we had to have a celebration of life for Michael here. And we're so grateful to the family for showing up. I've had the remarkable opportunity to get to know a number of family members, right? And inside of each of them is part of Michael, right? And that gets carried forward. And one of the great privileges of this job is to have these kinds of friendships and these kinds of relationships and together to all work to try and be worthy of the legacy he's given us. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. You're a tough act to follow. So, Josie, I feel a little, feel a little bad for you here, but... So, you all know that Michael loved the College of Business, but Michael invested across the university, and I think one of his passions was sports, in particular football. Um, he invested in a myriad number of ways in OU athletics, so here, to give his own remarks and reflections on Michael Price is our Vice President of Inter Intercollegiate Athletics, our Director of Athletics, Mr. Joe Castiglione. So Dean, apparently the uh, email I sent you, it must be stuck in spam because uh, I said, do not let me follow the President. <laughs> um, well, this is probably more personal than it is professional, but it's intertwined uh, because, you know, I can say to Jenny and Jonathan and Andrew and Charlie and your extended family that um, in a large degree, I'm here because of Michael Price. I, um, as I was being recruited to Oklahoma, um, Michael was on the search committee for the new athletic director. And although I didn't meet him, uh, and, and they didn't have Zoom back then, <laughs> but um, I didn't meet him during uh, my time on campus, uh, soon after that, then President David Boren connected the two of us and uh, just to get to know each other more and uh, create the connection itself to athletics. So from my earliest days in the summer of, of 1998, I've been um, connected uh, to Michael Price and family. So this is really a message of love to all of you um, for the part that it's played in my 25 years now here at Oklahoma. I, um, I remember through the years that I was so excited to re relate news of something. I was uh, teaching class for about 10 years here in Price College. And then when my son, Joe, my oldest son, came to the University of Oklahoma and declared major, he chose Price College. And I have my, uh, my youngest son now as a senior who will actually graduate from the Gaylord College of Journalism, but he had to declare a minor and he chose Price College. So it's run through our entire family. I, um, that first conversation though with Michael was quite interesting. You know, he's not shy um, and quite direct. And um, so we, after we have the nicety conversation, you know, he uh, gets right to it. And he says, well, you're here to do a job. And uh, you know, our football program isn't very good. And I said, factual. You know, that, uh, <laughs> that wasn't the first time the price was right. Um, but he said, I'm here to help. I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to be your partner. I'm going to help. 
And of course, um, you know, we were trying to figure out what we had to navigate. Again, it was only the early days I was here. And then about four and a half months later, we hired Mr. Bob Stoops as our head coach. And Michael stood true to his word. You know, he is obviously um, very involved, uh, as everybody's described, in investing in the students here at Oklahoma. But because of that draw that he had to the University of Oklahoma, as the President said and other speakers have said, um, he knew that part of Oklahoma's future success depended on how the rest of the world saw this university. And maybe the only way they saw it was through sports because of its visibility. So he wanted to be a huge help in that regard. He could relate. It was one of the reasons he chose to come to the University of Oklahoma himself. And so um, it's quite interesting, and maybe there's a little bit of symmetry here because um, we started a capital campaign, and um, knowing what you know, Michael really loved about Oklahoma, he lo loved everything, but he really identified for some reason with um, Oklahoma defense. When he came here, it was a remarkable offense, you know, a, uh, really a, a decade, if not one of the best defenses ever assembled in college football. Um, here at Oklahoma at the time. So he identified with defense, and he wanted to endow a scholarship. And so he did. And uh, we worked to try to figure out who the, the first recipient would be. And lo and behold, it was somebody who actually embodied very much the, uh, the toughness, the grit, the passion, um, and the vision of what they want to do, not just in the world of football, but what they want to do with their life. And the symmetry is this. Um, that person's going to be honored tomorrow. We started knowing of him wearing number 38. Then he got the nickname Superman. Then he got all the national awards that anybody could get as, at his position, and on the precipice of being a Heisman finalist. And tomorrow, in a thing, tomorrow we will honor Roy Williams as we celebrate his induction into the College Football Hall of Fame later this year. And I, Michael would be so thrilled to know that that was happening because he identified with somebody so early in their career, and look what happened. Now, um, we reached out to Roy and uh, tried to, you know, he had a, a conflict today, so he couldn't be here with us. But um, he really wanted to, you know, be present at least with a quote. And so I'd just like to um, read that to you. Uh, I am eternally grateful for Mr. Price's generosity. The experiences that I had at OU are some of my most cherished memories. And Mr. Price's generosity has inspired me to also give back in a meaningful way to my alma mater and support the athletes today, tomorrow, and well into the future. And if you know Roy Williams, one of the first athletes we've had early in their career, before they get that second contract, he made a significant financial gift to um, our program, most notably, it's the Roy Williams weight room. And he's made several gifts since then. So you see, as we've been talking about Michael's legacy, this is how it lives on and will live on through other people on into the future. So we think about as painful as it is that he's not here with us physically today, there are people that are going to carry him, his memory, his legacy, and what he meant and what he inspired those people to do so they in turn can inspire others. So Jenny and Jonathan and Andrew and Charlie, I remember his smiling faces when we were all assembled on the football field, Charlie, when you, you had made the decision to come to the University of Oklahoma like Jonathan and Andrew did. Um, we're going to be celebrating Michael for the rest of our lives. And uh, we could not be more grateful 
to him, to your family, and uh, what he means to all of us. I feel so fortunate to uh, have him in my life and uh, to be able to share the life that he's exemplified in the mission of this university and how we change lives, because he sure changed mine. Thank you very much. I don't know, President Harris. I think you got to run for your money on that one. <laughs> so I think it's clear the impact that Michael had on the leadership at the University of Oklahoma, whether it was President Harris, our AD Joe Castiglione, or, or myself, and, and many, many others. The other thing I don't want to lose sight of is the impact that he had on our students. Michael made investments across the university, but I think the thing that he was most passionate about was supporting students. You heard the, how he created the strategic investment fund that was his first real philanthropic gift to the university. One of the things he created with the, the gift, the $18 million gift in 1997, was the Price Scholars. So if you're not familiar with the Price Scholars program, we actually have one, at least one with us today, who actually works here within Price College, Sarah Swift, who's an MBA graduate of the University of Oklahoma and a former Price Scholar. Price Scholar program offers our MBA students an opportunity to not only intern in New York City in the financial district or a, a company nearby, but they get to take a course at my alma mater, the NYU Stern School of Business, and then they also take a two-day intensive seminar on value investing at Columbia University. This is something that Michael put together because he firmly believed that learning in the classroom is important. It's necessary, but it's not sufficient. You've got to get students out into the real world applying it. So he created the Price Scholars Program. We now have dozens of Price Scholars, well over 100 Price Scholars, and we heard from many of them after the news was released of Michael's passing back in March. And to every single one of them, they had nothing but great celebratory things to say about their experience in the Price College, uh, the Price Scholars program. But I don't want you to just take my word for how great this program is. We have prepared a video for you with a few of the Price Scholars for them to speak in their own words about the impact Michael Price and his creation of the Price Scholars program had on them. So what I'd like you to do is direct your attention to the video monitors in front of you, and we'll play the video shortly. I got to know Michael, and I said to Michael, you know, Michael, you really, you need to go back to Norman and give back to where you came from. What does it take to build a legacy, to help create an enduring environment where the next generation of business leaders can grow? where students can learn to innovate and rise to the challenges set before them? It takes vision. Michael F. Price understood that creating a world-class business school would take extraordinary investments in people, in addition to brick and mortar. His unprecedented gifts continued to provide critical support for students and faculty and led to the creation of the Michael F. Price Hall to support student learning. Michael was a wonderful human being, incredibly generous of his time as well as money. His legacy really is give back to where you came from because it's had a major part of making you who you are. And who he was has grown from unique experiences and opportunities he had while attending the University of Oklahoma. Michael knew if students were going to thrive, they would need unique experiential learning opportunities of their own. They needed to get out and encounter the business world. To help turn students' dreams into reality, he gave them a semester in New York City. Dozens of MBA students have been impacted by the Price Scholars Program. They have become part of his legacy. When I found out that I was awarded the Price Scholarship, it was pretty surreal. My first time ever coming to New York City was with the Price Scholarship Group. I couldn't believe that an opportunity to live and work in New York was actually happening. Having the Price Scholarship had a huge impact on my career trajectory because I don't think I would have had the confidence to make a full-time move up to New York if I hadn't had the chance to have that trial period. A year after I moved here, ended up finding my current job, which I love. 
it's a really cool role in that while it is like accounting focus, I feel like I'm getting to bring in a lot of the general business side from the MBA as well. I think OU and the Price College of Business set us up with a great foundation to be able to have anything open to us that we could dream of. So, you know, here we are being part of, of that big city energy. That's definitely a dream becoming a reality. For me, it was a dream to try to land an internship with Michael. At the time, I think maybe two people had done an internship with Michael prior to me, so it was not every year was a given. Working with Michael was an incredible experience. Just being there and seeing Michael and getting to hear him communicate with the other analysts and, and just kind of see how he worked, it was exciting. Construction industry is, has been a passion of mine for a long time, and I'm working as an expert witness, which is a construction consultant. A lot of the work that I do is actually international, but I've, I've had uh, some experience working in New York as well. I've been here 12 years now. Michael's influence and his presence has really impacted my life. I mean, I wouldn't be staying in New York City if it wasn't for the, the Michael Price Scholarship. Me being able to get the scholarship and, and work with him, it was really a springboard to get to New York permanently. I went to undergraduate primarily for basketball, and so I graduated, but wasn't making much progression towards any sort of career or any money. And so when I researched all of the local MBA programs, OU was by far the highest prestige. My number one objective was to try to go to New York City for the summer. What I really desired was something different and something I couldn't get exposed to here locally. I, I wanted to go be challenged out there. Brian and I were Price Scholars together. I cherish the time that I had in, in New York City. It was a terrific experience for me, and I think our partnership wouldn't be here if not for that. So Infinity Capital Partners is a boutique investment bank, which means we help companies with unique capital needs. We forged a friendship at the Price College of Business uh, in the MBA program, and we kept in touch. We were at lunch at Packard's. Some ideas got thrown around and we decided that each of us knew kind of how the investment banking process worked. So we did what foolish 27 and 20 year olds do. We started a business. The impact of Michael F. Price had a profound effect on my life. He was awesome and laid back and we were all very intimidated of him as you can imagine, but he, he was just fantastic. Infinity Capital Partners doesn't exist today without um, the opportunity that we were afforded through both the scholarship and the, the College of Business. Michael F. Price understood establishing legacy requires a vision. Now for the next chapter. True to his character, Michael was deeply involved in crafting the new strategic direction for the college that bears his name. His legacy will provide the platform for our future. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, absolutely. It was great to actually hear directly from the Price Scholars in the video. Um, I'm really pleased that they were, they made themselves available to be interviewed. I'm also very pleased that Ron Yagoda made himself available to the interview. We flew the, the crew out to his place in Arizona, shot it in his home. Unfortunately, Ron wasn't able to be here today, but I know he's here in, in spirit with us. Um, the other folks I'd like to thank is this video was produced by Gaylord Hall Productions in the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communications. So in particular, Scott Hodgins, who runs that. Uh, big shout out to him for making this great piece for us. This was a very big effort behind the scenes, as you might imagine. I played a very small part, but the team at Price College very, played a very big part in pulling this together. Um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to tell you about what's going to happen here next year. Um, when we started planning this event, we started having discussions about how do we make sure that we symbolically capture the life and legacy of Michael Price beyond having a ceremony for him, something that would be durable, that would be permanent, that would remind people that had gone through Price College and students in the future that would go through Price College. Um, so the vision started taking shape a few months ago and now it's really accelerated. And what I really like to do is to unveil to you a rendering 
of what the Michael F. Price statue will look like once it's completed and put on the grounds of Price Hall sometime next year. So that students, faculty, and staff, both former, present, and in the future, will be able to look at him and recognize the person that he was and the impact that he had on this university. So underneath this nice red tarp is the painting. So you'll see a rendering of what it's gonna look like once it's been in place. Production of the statue has already started. It'll actually start being cast sometime early in the spring. Once it's finished and put on its pedestal, shortly thereafter we'll have a ceremony. We'll arrange for a ceremony to have its unveiling. But what I'd like to do is get a few members, and I'm gonna to look to Amber and, and remind me, who do you want up here so we can unveil it and get some photos? In a, in the Price family, of course, and, and our two Joes and Jim. So why not all of you join us up here? You're gonna direct us for the shot. I'm gonna gingerly unveil this because I've been told the easel is a bit rickety. So I'm gonna try not to knock it down. Thank you. It's always a bit awkward to throw a photo shoot into the middle of a ceremony like this, but <laughs> thanks, thanks everybody for playing along. Um, before we close the program, I, I'd like to thank the Price family for being here today to celebrate with us the life and legacy of Michael Price. I want to echo what you've heard from President Harris and from, from Joe C. You are cherished members of the OU family and Sooner Nation. We know that the legacy of Michael lives on in you, and it will continue to live on in future generations of students here at the University of Oklahoma. So thank you very much for turning out in force today and supporting the memory of Michael Price. What I'd like to do now before we close is to honor Michael by performing a time-honored tradition here at the University of Oklahoma. This is the OU chant. The chant is gonna be performed today by one of our own Price College talented members. She's a senior advisor for us in the college. Her name is Cristela Carizales, and what I would like to do is have Cristela come to the stage because what you're about to experience is not only is she a great advisor, and champion for our students. She's also a gifted singer. So with that, Christella, I'm gonna turn it over to you. If everyone will please stand. Wands up. Okay, L-A-H-O-M-A. Our chat rolls on and on. Thousand strong join heart and song in Alma Mater's praise of campus beautiful by day and night, of colors proudly gleaming red and white neath the western sky. Oh, use chant will never die. Live on, university.
So please be seated. We're just about finished. What, what you don't know is there's a bit of an inside joke between Christelle and myself. And that's because at two previous events where Christella was supposed to sing the chant, and I'm sure you can relate to this after my saying of University of Washington rather than the U University of Oklahoma, is I forgot to have Christella come up and do the chant. <laughs> True story. So she will never let me live it down, nor should she. But I want to say again, thank you, Christella, for doing such a great job today. So thank you all for joining us today for this very special event. What I'd like to do now is to remind everybody that we're gonna have a reception in Dotson Lounge, which is just to your right. So my understanding is we're gonna be zipping up this side tent cover here so people can go in. So I encourage everybody to join. And just a, a quick reminder here, if you plan to attend Saturday's game against Baylor, I would like to invite you to the Price College tailgate. It's gonna take place here in Dotson Courtyard. We're gonna have ribs from Rib Crib, which has become a tradition here. We're gonna have live music, so we're gonna have a band playing, student performers all from Weizenhofer College of Fine Arts, and we're all gonna have drinks. So I really hope that you come by if you can and celebrate with us. Thank you once again, and Boomer Sooner.